Okay, so with the uh, the critical reception assignment, um, Barry starts us with a question regarding research. And the first question is, can you use the reviews that are on the back cover? Is that what you're talking about, on the back cover? Um, you may use those as long as you are finding the original sources. So let's try this for a moment. Uh, you, you've got some reviews on the back there, Barry? And um, pick one and tell me who it comes from. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh, for those of you that don't know, even though it sounds like it's a religious uh, organization, the Christian Science Monitor is actually a, um, a very highly reputed standard news source. So, um, Christian Science Monitor, the notebook, Nicholas Sparks. So what I'm finding here. What I'm looking for is the original review. So I do not want you just citing the back cover of the book. That's not a sufficient resource. However, I do encourage you to try to find the original review because if the Christian Science Monitor published that, then somewhere out there that review should exist. Now when I see this, this search, I see a lot of um, hits coming up simply because of the sentence on the back cover that you just read. So it's pulling up a lot of that. So I'm going to look again. I noticed that I lacked a quotation there. Okay, so I'm just going to look for the Christian Science Monitor itself. Okay, there it is. Now I'm going into the website for the Christian Science Monitor. I'm going to look for Nicholas Sparks. Let's see if I can spell it correctly. Yes, yes. Nicholas Sparks, 58 matches. I want to add notebook to it to narrow my search. And now I got 1,529 matches. Well, that's not good. <laughs> uh, so I probably want to do a better search to make sure that it's, uh, oh, there we go, advanced search. Um, search all the words. Well, looks like I got better results just by looking for Nicholas Sparks. So I'm going to go back to that. 58 matches, and I'm going to look in here to see if I can find something that looks like the review of the notebook. Um, Barry, when was the notebook published? Do you see in the inside um, front few pages? It should be on the um, the the page right behind the title page where you see some detailed publication information. Two thousand four? Is that the original publication or just the publication date of that one? Nineteen ninety six. Okay, so here's here's what we got. Um, nineteen ninety six is the publication date. And look here, I'm seeing all the way back from 1996. And let me expand this a little bit. Can I also use the review, but it says uh, all of America loves the notebook and it's published for three years. I use these as well. well. Once again, if you find the original review. So um, I, I don't want to um, spend too much time on this because I think Barry and the rest of you probably get the point that use that as a guide to find out what the reviews are. Okay, so number one research hint. Look for the reviews that are on the back of the book and try to find it. Now, I'm thinking that I might be able to find it because look at this. It's drawn me back all the way to 1996. They probably reviewed it close to the publication date. 
So I'm thinking that some of these hits might actually carry the review, or enough of the review that I can use it. So that could work. So there's one research hint for those of you looking for critical reception. Look at the reviews somewhere in the book. Try to find the full thing, the full um, citation. What else can you do to find professional reviews of a book besides just open Google searches? You guys, I think, have been mentally scarred at an early age to not use Wikipedia in a professional manner, and that's a shame. Because that's the notebook film. Let's see if we can have a novel of the same name. There's the notebook book. You may not, and here's what I want to emphasize. I'm not, di I'm not totally um, countering what your previous teachers have told you. I'm not saying you can use Wikipedia as a resource. I'm saying that what you want to do is scroll down to the references and see if you can find anything there. Now here, it's looking a little bit sparse. So all I've got on this is the, the background of the book and the plot of the book. And I'm not seeing a lot of critical review. I'm seeing a little bit on Nicholas Sparks' biography. If those of you working with the author biography might check out this link. Um, official book website. But I'm not seeing a lot with reviews. So this one doesn't really show me very much. However, many Wikipedia sites will contain numerous resources down at the bottom. And those resources themselves are excellent. It's almost like a very focused search engine. So if you're looking for um, reviews of that, then you can check that out as well. So there are a couple hints for finding critical reception information. Other questions about the critical reception, since we're on that right now? Okay. Well, let me, who else feels that they would like to write this paper? Yeah, dun, 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 dun. Austin, you're reading Catching Fire, right? Yeah. Oh, the author biography? OK, but let's stick with the critical reception right now. So who else is doing critical reception? OK, OK. Tamara, Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, right? OK. You want Girl with the Dragon Tattoo in books? There we go. All right. You read Girl with the Dragon Tattoo, and you want to find out how um, critics and non-critics alike have, have uh, read this book. And let's start with the non-professional. So we've taken a look at some of the professional ways that you might go with it. And non-professional, look at the customer review section here on Amazon. I think Amazon.com does a fantastic job of showing a non-professional sentiment toward a book. And primarily because they do almost a scientific rating of the book based upon customer reviews. They've got 3,365 customer reviews for a Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. And it seems that, for the most part, um, almost half of them, rated it five stars. So Tamara could make a claim saying that, for the most part, readers, average readers, tend to like Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. And then she could pull quotations from these sources. Blah, blah, blah. Larson's carefully calibrated tale is more than a grisly, cynical worldview of his country and the modern world at large. At its core, it is a fascinating character study of a young woman who easily masters computer code, but for whom human interaction is almost always more trouble than it is worth. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Um, so that seems like a pretty complimentary quotation. So if Tamara were saying, readers tend to like Girl with a Dragon Tattoo. For instance, KM reports on Amazon.com that, and there you go. That's what I'm looking for out of the paper. I'm looking for some sort of general statement. People tend to like it. And then I'm looking for evidence and example. And Tamara might even go also to another major retailer, this being BarnesandNoble.com. And see how this works. 
see, we've got book, book, book. Okay. I'm not as familiar with BM, but editorial reviews. an excerpt. Ah, there we go. Doing the same thing. Wow. 16,000 reviews there. And 7,789 of them give it five stars. That distribution looks almost identical to the distribution on Amazon.com. So then you can really make the claim that for the most part readers tend to like the book. Um, except for that person. But uh, great book, superb writing. And uh, another hint, when you are Referring to these people, you refer to them by their username. So you might even say anonymous in the case of this one, or you'd say Onyx Dragon in the case of this one. It's not going to be just Joe Smith. Or you could say 1 Catherine 1 or Tyne 06. All right? So that's how you pull your non professional. And you could also go just to regular blogs if you wanted to go to lit blogs. And then you pull your professional by actually researching some uh, Christian Science Monitor, NPR, New York Times book reviews. Make a claim, and that's it. More questions about the critical reception? No? You're all good? Draft will be due next week. So if you're set for what you need to research and how you need to write a draft, then uh, we'll move on to the next one. Megan, I'm sorry? Thursday's draft, and then finals due on Monday, I believe. Yeah. Don't quote me on that. I'm horrible with dates. That's why I program them in my website, so you can see them there. All right, let's go to uh, what do you want next, the author biography or the um, connection paper? <coughs> Who's doing what? <coughs> Absolutely. OK, JoJo, we're going to work on the author biography. And you are reading about Nicholas Sparks. Okay, so you're reading the lucky one. And uh, what sort of information have you found about Nicholas Sparks so far? Uh, well, he lives, he lives in North Carolina. Uh, no, he does live in North Carolina. Yep. Pause for a moment. I, I, I hope that everybody's hearing what she's saying because she's already on the right track. JoJo's saying he lives in North Carolina. Is the, is the book at least partially set in North Carolina? Yeah. Just about every one of his books is. Thank you. So um, he's writing about where he lives. And secondly, and this one I've never actually heard of, and I've read a lot of Nicholas Sparks' author biographies, that he lives near a military base. And therefore, he has contact with military members, families, um, soldiers, and so on. So it's not just the lucky one, but also what Dear John, in which he writes about a um, soldier in Iraq or Afghanistan. I can't remember. Um, that's the kind of connection that I'm looking for. So JoJo's saying, this guy lives here in this place and has contact with these people, so he writes their stories. That's excellent. That's exactly what I'm looking for. But that's probably about one paragraph out of something that might be three or four paragraphs long. The rest of it is just simple biographical information. All right. So um, JoJo, where are you going to find that biographical information for Sparks? Where do you think you're going to look online? Sure. Let's, uh, let's go back to Wikipedia. Once again, not citing it, but using it as a starting point. Nicholas Sparks, ah, okay, we're going to scroll down past his big head. Uh, see, this is more like it. This is when I like a Wikipedia page, and it's got all these awesome references. Um, wow, if you wanted to talk about any sort of Catholicism in Nicholas Sparks, looks like they've got a, an article right here. But let's talk about just biographical information. Formal biography here, um, Nicholas Sparks' bio from the Ferrum College website. Um, Book Browse is uh, a literary um, online source. Got a biography for Nicholas Sparks there. Uh, let's see, we've got those. His official website. So you'd probably find some good information on the official website. 
about Nicholas. It sounds so tender and personal. Oh, there he is. So there's a there's a lot of information there about uh, our buddy Nicholas, and formal biography. This uh, we'll see what this is all about. Uh, right, dead dead link. Uh, so let's go back to book browse. Is dead link? Oh no, it's not a dead link. Oh, the Wayback Machine. You guys are familiar with what the Wayback Machine is? Files online are very, very hard to kill. Like regular HTML files, very, very hard to delete. Because once they're out there, it seems like they never go away. Um, so even though a web page may not exist, the Wayback Machine sort of archives web pages. So if I create a web page, and then a year later I delete it, Somewhere in that year, the Wayback Machine has probably taken a picture of it and stored it so then somebody can access it even though I've deleted it. It's, it's scary and interesting all at the same time. Um, so it looks like this site is no longer there. That's why it took a moment for the Wayback Machine to pull up its copy of it. You can still cite it. And there we've got Nicholas Sparks biography there. What would I do? Well, it depends upon how much publication information I've got. So I've got this banner up here. Do um, you see where it comes from? May, it took a picture of this on May 2, 2008. So that's where it comes from. And I could go forward to see any changes. May 9th looks like the same thing. Um, I would, uh, I would um, cite it as the May 2008 website. As if, as if I were pulling it from May 2008. Because what the Wayback Machine has done is presented as it appeared at that point. Okay. So I would cite it that way. Uh, we've got biographical information here, biographical information here, biographical information here, three biographies. And guys, do the same thing you're doing with the current events report. Read three sources on the same topic. Discover what they say is similar, what they say is not similar, and then just write the paper. Wendy. How do you write a claim for that? It's an excellent point. Um, I get two options. Your claim could just start at the beginning of his life. Nicholas Sparks was born, blah, 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 to so and so and so and so, the second of five children, I don't know, and then just start the life. That's one way to start. The other way is to start with a claim that relates to the material that JoJo was talking about. And you could say that um, Nicholas Sparks experiences with members of the military have led him to write books about um, people living in the military, something like that. And then my claim is, is more analytical and focused on the, the actual thinking work that I'm doing. So either option works. When you see my example, my example of the author biography on Harper Lee kind of does that. Harper Lee's life in the South during the Great Depression perfectly suited her to create Depression Era Makeum into Kill a Mockingbird. And then I go back to the beginning and then start with her life. OK? All right, so no problem on finding that biographical information, hopefully. Um, anybody working with the author bio and not seeing the connections with their author's life? Oh, okay. Dan. So Dan Brown. Let's see what we can do with uh, with Dan Brown here. Um, if I remember correctly. <coughs> He's got uh, Catholicism in his upbringing? Yeah. OK, so there's a connection, right? Because Dan Brown writes um, not just about conspiracy theories and cryptography, but he often writes in The Da Vinci Code and Angels and Demons about the Catholic Church. So um, let's see what we've got here for resources. Oh, a lot. Look at that.
I would, I think that Carmen, when you say, well, I found information that he likes to do codes, that seems pretty insubstantial. But if you find information that says he was raised in a certain Catholic upbringing, that's hugely substantial. And um, I'm sure that with as best-selling an author as Dan Brown is, you could find somebody talking about his Catholic upbringing and how he feels about it. And he's got some of the, uh, uh, his books just focus on the Catholic Church. Somebody must have approached that. So I think there's your key for, for Dan Brown. Okay. So check it out and see what you can find about Dan Brown and Catholicism. Dan Brown, Catholicism. Oh, Dan Brown and the Catholic Church. I have no idea what Zenith is. So I might check that out. Um, the world seen from Rome. That's interesting. Anyway, um, da -da 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 -da, I might see if I can the background in the Catholic Church. I think that would be my connection. Anybody else have any problems? Uh, anybody considering then working on the connection paper? I figured that wouldn't be very popular. But let me uh, let me model it um, or talk about it, and I'll I'll talk about Catching Fire for a moment. Um, people reading Catching Fire and the Hunger Games, especially Catching Fire, know that the government of um, Suzanne Collins' world is rather repressive and does not tolerate anybody um, dissenting. Can anybody give me an example from one of those stories of somebody that does sort of screw up in the government's mind and what the government does to them? Yeah. Uh, well, um, in the actual Hunger Games, what we get in uh, the Mm-hmm. Right. And then the government actually goes to uh, their house and threatens A government goes to the house of somebody that the government fears might actually be a political opponent and threatens them and says, don't you dare fall out of line or else your whole family's going. I was listening this morning. I don't know if anybody saw this in any of your current events research. Um, a, this is a big international incident right now. Um, and I can't remember his name, but a Chinese dissident. He's a blind man. He's a lawyer. He's a political activist. Um, he has been opposing the Chinese government. And they had him um, under arrest. I don't know if it was house arrest or actually in a prison. But in some way, he was able to escape and get to the American embassy. So this Chinese dissident, a person that the Chinese government felt was an opponent, sought refuge in the American embassy in China. And now, of course, we've got a problem because we've been holding um, a Chinese dissident. And uh, the, in the eyes of the Chinese government, he's a criminal. In our eyes, he's just an um, agent for change and help for the Chinese people. I see that as very similar to Catching Fire. And that scene where, in the beginning of Catching Fire, where President Snow actually goes to Katniss's house and threatens her and basically says, you've got to fall into line, is very similar to what's happening with this man right now. Because he has been released from the American embassy. He's actually just been taken to a hospital, I think, yesterday. And the Chinese government will probably threaten, coerce, or give him the same message. OK, now you're out of the American embassy. Don't keep doing what you're doing, or else you've got a problem. I could see that as a very strong connection. The world that Suzanne Collins has created in Catching Fire is very much the world that exists right now in certain parts of the globe. So you could draw that connection pretty well. And that would be a good one. It's an interesting uh, event that's occurring right now. All right, so those are the papers. Uh, the connection, the author biography, and the critical reception. The, that's my intention for when you write them. And the, the research should not be all that uh, taxing to do. If you do run into any problems with the research, please let me know. Um, I've worked with students in this type of research 
for individual book choices many, many times and have helped them out of jams that they've gotten themselves into. So um, sooner the better. I know you're working on current events report number five right now. Um, but once that's finished and polished, then you can turn your attention to this. Last questions? All right. That's enough.